Reverse mortgages. You can use it to grow your wealth? You sure can, and we're going to talk about it right now. Let's do this. How's it going? My name is John, and I am a mortgage broker located in Vancouver. And if you want to learn ways to be approved for a mortgage, home buying tips, and other mortgage related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell so you won't miss anything. We are delighted to have Victor Chang, Business Development Manager from Home Equity Bank. How's it going? Very well, thanks John for inviting me. Yeah, we're super excited to uh, interview you and to get your insight on how to use reverse mortgages uh, to grow well. Amazing. Yeah, so now there are some misconceptions about reverse mortgages. So let's start off with that. The elephants in the room, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we clear all that up? Yeah, absolutely. I think. The main misconception that people have had, and a lot of that has come in from, you know, online sources and stuff that has happened um, in the past, especially in the United States. But what many people don't know is that, you know, Home Equity Bank and the Chip Reverse Mortgage Program that we own um, has been in business in Canada for over 35 years. Um, we have a 95% customer satisfaction rate over that period of time, and we don't get there with some of the misconceptions um, and myths that are out in the market. So number one, um, clients think that you know for some reason the the big bad bank may come and you know foreclose on your home and take it away. Um, like I said, we don't get to 95% customer satisfaction by foreclosing on retirees or seniors' homes. Um, in fact, you know I would say. If you had a traditional mortgage, say at a major bank, and you stopped making payments, yeah, they're gonna potentially foreclose on your home because you need to make payments. But with the chip reverse mortgage product with Home Equity Bank, the payments are optional. And in fact, most of our clients don't make payments. So the only thing we require is that, number one, you're paying your property taxes, which in BC you can defer. Uh, number two, you're making your home insurance uh, payments. And number three, if you've got a strata, uh, you're making your strata condo uh, monthly payments and you're keeping your place in a inhabitable or living good living condition right as long as those conditions are met you can stay in that home for as long as you want because our mortgage is a lifetime program and again it's payment option or a no payment mortgage right um, so that's number one um, the second kind of major misconception is, I wouldn't say misconception, is this concern of compounding interest. Now everybody's talking about interest these days because obviously the government of Canada has been increasing rates uh, quite rapidly this year. Um, all time historically wise, I think we're probably close to average, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, but you know what, compounding interest because you don't make payments, you know, of course it is a concern and you have to uh, factor that into account and it's not necessarily the greatest thing. But the other side of it is that you have retirees that are on minimal income, but in Vancouver, the city on average, the average home price in Vancouver is about $1.2 million, right? So a lot of these clients are living house rich and cash poor. Um, and unfortunately, that's not a you know, way to live either, right? So you have to factor out you know, what you want uh, in your life and what you want through your retirement years, how you want it, because many people don't realize that you know, yeah, they are multimillionaires. Um, the other thing with compounding interest is that, oh, clients think that, or our clients think, or our Canadians think that, um, that the value of the interest uh, accumulated over a period of 10, 15 years may exceed the value of the home. This is why Home Equity Bank has always had a no negative equity guarantee. What that basically means that is that if you ever come into a situation where the Vancouver housing market tanks and the value of the loan is above and beyond the value of your home, that's okay, continue to live in that home, right? When you pass away uh, down the line, your kids or your estate sells the home and all you pay back to Home Equity Bank is the value of that sale, nothing more. Your kids would never be stuck uh, for more than the, the sale price of that property. Right. The final one I think we'll discuss a little bit more as we progress is that uh, somehow the reverse mortgage is only a lender of last resort. I can't get a loan anywhere else, so we're going to go and get a reverse mortgage. And we'll, we'll chat about more of that. So how has people changed the use of reverse mortgages, say, in the past 
five to 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I talk about, this conversion from this idea that the reverse mortgage is a, a lender of last resort. Oh, you know, I've got, uh, you know, five credit cards that I'm maxed out on and nobody will loan me money. So, you know, I understand that the reverse mortgage, you don't need income or a credit score to qualify. So let's get a reverse. That was, you know, a large part of the history uh, of the reverse mortgage program. What we found is over the last, you know, especially 10, 15 years, and especially in markets, I should say Canada in general, but especially in Vancouver and Toronto, where home prices have literally quadrupled, if not five times, um, the conversation has really shifted from that needs-based approach to what do I want? You know, what do I want? Do I want to generate more wealth? Do I want to generate more income? You know, do I want to help my kids out, um, get into the housing market that's so expensive, helping my kids live closer to me? So that's a huge one um, for us right now is educating not just retirees, but also their children that are potentially, you know, in their mid 30s, early 40s, that are looking to get into the housing market or, you know, are trying to upsize into that two or three bedroom home because they have two kids and a dog and, you know, all these expenses, but they can't afford to live close to their parents, whether the parents are in, you know, Richmond or Vancouver or wherever, where they bought in for, you know, cheap 20, 30 years ago, right? So, you know, the question is, how far do you want to live uh, from your parents? Or from the parents' standpoint, how far do you want to live from your grandchildren? Because if the parents have a $2 million home and they can afford to take out 10% of the value of that home tax-free to help the children with a down payment, all of a sudden that's the difference between living from an hour, an hour and a half away to five to 10 minutes away, yeah. right? So we do a lot of that these days. So is that what we're seeing the trend is where parents are doing a reverse mortgage and they helping the kids out uh, to purchase? Yeah, I mean, if you are, whether you're a parent listening to this YouTube video or if you're a, a adult child listening to this video, I would say always evaluate the circumstances, right? You might have a significant down payment that you can contribute to your home already, but the reality is you gotta analyze what the cost associated with that is, right? You have to analyze, are you selling stocks? Are you selling mutual funds? Are you taking money out of, you know, your company's stock options? Because last year I had a client that was gonna withdraw $400,000 out of his Amazon stock option plan um, to, to pay 50% tax to get $200,000 out. Meanwhile, the shares were growing at 40% a year. I mean, that opportunity cost is huge. If you're asking your parents for some help, that's great that the parents can help you, but what's their cost, right? Are they gonna lose their old age security because they've taken too much income as a result of selling you know, out of their RSPs or their RIFs? Uh, are they selling mutual funds? What's the growth of that mutual fund, right? You gotta consider all the costs and then look at, you know, could we take some tax-free money out of their home? You know, we're not talking 50% of the value of their home. We're talking maybe 10, 15% at most. And then is there a plan to potentially repay the interest on that? So there's a lot of conversation around that. But beyond helping kids with a down payment, the other things that we're seeing a lot in the market are, you know, when we look at our average retiree, 65 year old couple, um, you know, the number one concern is, do I have enough money to last me through my retirement years? And unfortunately, people are living longer, fortunately, unfortunately, people are living longer and longer, right? Uh, my parents are, you know, in their mid 70s. My grandparents are, one's 102 um, in Shanghai. Um, the other one, I just saw a photo, she got, finally got out of lockdown out of Shanghai, but she's 102. Um, my grandma, other grandma in Richmond is 98, right? So there's a lot of longevity in my family, and I don't know about yours, but the question is always, you know, from a child standpoint, me and my brother are thinking, do my parents have enough money to, you know, retire on? And if I had known about the reverse mortgage program 10 years ago when my parents were in their 60s and just retired, I would have suggested to them something like, you know, why don't you take some equity out of your home and provide you with an income stream? Whether that's through our income advantage program, which is a direct $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month of income to put in your pocket, or whether you take a lump sum amount and maybe you buy a rental property in Vancouver. Uh, I could say if my parents took some money out and bought a rental property in Vancouver 10 years ago, they would be in a much better financial situation than they are today because not only would they be able to collect rental income and put it in their pocket, that condo probably you know, would have 
doubled in price <laughs> over the last conservatively years, right? conservatively <laughs> right so when you look at that retirement formula all of a sudden two homes one single detached one condo 10 years in the Vancouver market while collecting rental income that changes you know uh, the, the the whole conception of that retirement planning right is it better to withdraw money tax-free from your home versus withdrawing money from your RSPs or your RIFs and paying 30-40% uh, tax on. And that's a conversation that I'm sure, John, um, you can definitely have with a lot of not only retirees, but also their children, especially if they're starting to think about um, you know, their parents' retirement and you know, do I want my parents to eventually move into my basement? And if I don't, is there a better way to help them with their plan? So those are really amazing ideas. I'm sure there are thousands of different creative ways to use a reverse mortgage. But uh, what would be like the closing thoughts that you would like to share for those who are watching this video right yeah, now? Yeah, I mean, don't be shy to educate yourself, right? Ask questions, learn the truth, talk to John, you know, uh, uh, talk to your mortgage broker uh, to find what the reality of this program is, right? Um, Home Equity Bank was recently acquired by the Ontario Teachers Pension Plan. We're also a Schedule 1 bank. You think one of the most conservative and largest pensions in the world have decided to make a major investment in a reverse mortgage company. We've got Peter Mansbridge, that's a spokesperson for us. We've got Patty Lovett Reed, who used to be the chief uh, CTV financial uh, commentator, that's you know talking about retirement planning concepts. The reality is that the program has changed significantly, and a lot of that is driven by the wealth creation of the real estate market in, in Canada. Um, what I can say is that, think of it this way, right? If you won the 649, right, or the Lotto Max, right? All of a sudden you're a multi-millionaire. Are you gonna park that money at your bank and they say that, oh, to withdraw it, it's gonna cost you whether it's 5% interest or 7% interest. Are you gonna say no and just let it sit there at the bank, wait for you to pass away and then give it to your children? No, of course not. You're gonna spend some of it. But the reality is that many people living in Canada have won the real estate lottery. Right, and they just don't realize it. And the bank is not their TD bank or RBC. The bank is actually in their home and it's just educating and making that right decision on how to release that equity out of the home, talking to your you know, mortgage broker, your financial advisor, your accountant, to see if it is a good option, right? So, yeah. And there you go. We just went over how to grow wealth using reverse mortgage. And please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn more and make sure you click on the notification bell so you won't miss a video. I'm John Lee, mortgage broker and CEO of Rise Mortgage. We're always achieving your approval.